While we hopefully understand the basics of position, velocity, and acceleration, how do we express and analyze these quantities graphically? Besides questions on the kinematic definitions and equations, another very common type of question that will appear on your tests will be about position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time graphs. The basic format of all these graphs are identical. The time variable t will lie on the x-axis with either position, velocity, or acceleration on the y-axis. The shape of the curve represents the y-axis variable as a function of time. Analyzing any single graph is not too hard. Take this position versus time graph for, say, a car traveling on a straight road, for example. Simply put, the position of the car at any time is just any point on the graph, with changes in position, or displacement, being represented by the difference in position values at any two times. This exact same thought process can be applied to velocity or acceleration graphs, to get a general feel for an object's motion over a period of time. However, many questions will ask you to interpret or convert one type of graph to another type. For solving these types of questions, I like to think of position, velocity, and acceleration as three different levels or say floors of a house, with position on the top floor, acceleration on the bottom floor, and velocity in the middle. To convert any graph to the floor underneath it, we simply graph the slope of the original given graph at any given time. To convert a graph up a floor or up a level, simply graph the area enclosed by the original graph at any given time. To explain this concept a little bit more clearly, let's take a look at this velocity versus time graph and draw its corresponding position and acceleration versus time graphs too. To draw the acceleration versus time graph, we would be going down a level, thus we must look at the slope. From 0 to 3 seconds, we can find the slope using the rise over run formula from your math class, giving us a value of 2. From 3 to 8 seconds, the velocity does not change, thus the slope is 0. From these numbers, we can construct a corresponding acceleration versus time graphs, which looks something like this. Now, the reason this slope rule works in the first place comes from our basic kinematic definition. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Even looking at the units of a velocity time graph, the rise over run, or slope, would be meters per second over seconds, which is an acceleration unit. Another great way to check if your process is correct is that all acceleration graphs, because we only consider uniform acceleration, should consist only of horizontal lines at different values. We can find the position versus time graph in a very similar manner using the area enclosed under the velocity graph. By plotting a few points and calculating the areas under either the triangle from 0 to 3 seconds or the rectangles from 3 to 8 seconds, we can arrive at our position versus time graphs as shown here. To describe the motion of this car, let's essentially walk ourselves through the graphs we graphed. At time 0, the object starts to speed up, moving farther away from the starting point in the positive direction at a faster and faster rate. At time equals 3 seconds, the object begins to coast at a constant velocity of 6 meters per second uniformly moving away from the starting point in the same direction as it originally was going. In reality, a lot of these graphs on your tests won't be so straightforward. With things like objects turning around or slowing down, the basic principle of going up a level or a floor and going down are identical as before. So make sure you go slowly through each graph and understand the story the graph is trying to tell you. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about position, velocity, and acceleration versus time graphs.